Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some devotionals with all of you. The first one is titled, How Can I Share the Truth About God with My Friends? First, let's discuss what we shouldn't do when sharing our faith. Argument. When hearts are proud or stubborn, we dig in and fight, no matter what creative or logical argument. People don't respond well when arguments are presented. So don't preach at people and don't be arrogant. Remember, you were once in their position. Ephesians 2 verse 13 There are three specific things we can do to share God with those we care about. Be a true friend and listen. Then, if they are open to it, share information. The Bible says, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Colossians 4 verse 6 It's a good idea to pray, asking the Holy Spirit to guide you and help you know when to speak and what to say. Share with your friends what God has done for you personally. How has a relationship with Him changed your life for the better? That can make a real impact in someone's thinking. Sometimes sharing a book or a DVD works well, especially with people who are argumentative. Be a good example. You don't want to be unchristlike and get angry at your friends if they disagree with you. That's not the way Jesus would win them over. But you can set an example in the way that you live. If love is your motivation in life, people will notice. In all things, show yourself to be a pattern of good works. Use sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Titus 2, verses 6 through 8. Pray for your friends, consistently and patiently. Remember, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. James 5, verse 16. We can't see things the way God does, and sometimes it takes months or years for Him to reach those we love. Trust that he wants to save your friends even more than you do. Don't give up. Keep on praying. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17, verse 17. And that's the end of the first one. And the second one is titled, Power in Importunate Prayer. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Philippians 4 verse 6 Jacob prevailed because he was persevering and determined. His experience testifies to the power of importunate prayer. It is now that we are to learn this lesson of prevailing prayer of unyielding faith. The greatest victories to the Church of Christ or to the individual Christian are not those that are gained by talent or education, by wealth, or the favor of men. They are those victories that are gained in the audience chamber with God, when earnest, agonizing faith lays hold upon the mighty arm of power. Those who are unwilling to forsake every sin and to seek earnestly for God's blessing will not obtain it, but all who will lay hold of God's promises as did Jacob and be as earnest and persevering as he was will succeed as he succeeded. And that's the end of the second one. And the last one I'd like to share with you all is titled, The Lord is Your Strength. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. 
Fear not, neither be dismayed. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 The sense of sin has poisoned the springs of life. But Christ says, I will take your sins. I will give you peace. I have bought you with my blood. You are mine. My grace shall strengthen your weakened will. Your remorse for sin I will remove. When temptations assail you, when care and perplexity surround you, when depressed and discouraged, you are ready to yield to despair. Look to Jesus, and the darkness that encompasses you will be dispelled by the bright shining of his presence. When sin struggles for the mastery in your soul and burdens the conscience, look to the Savior. His grace is sufficient to subdue sin. Let your grateful heart trembling with uncertainty turn to him lay hold on the hope set before you christ waits to adopt you into his family his strength will help your weakness he will lead you step by step place your hand in his and let him guide you never feel that christ is far away he is always near his loving presence surrounds you. Seek him as one who desires to be found of you. He desires you not only to touch his garments, but to walk with him in constant communion. And that is the end of these devotionals. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.